Hello, welcome to Dumb Girls Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. Today we're reviewing a comic book, which we haven't reviewed a comic book in like two months. <laughs> so this is like the first comic book re- uh, yeah, review of 2022. This, this is actually uh, Marvel Masterworks Golden Age Mystic Comics Volume 1 Collection, which collects four issues of Mystic Comics. Um from the 1930s or 40s so these are golden age comics which are each issues around like 60 pages right and contain like multiple stories right uh which um which are only like a few pages long right and some have have reoccurring uh characters so, uh, re- reoccurring characters, uh, uh, some, like, don't show up in, fe- in the other issues, even though they, they were, uh, it would say at the cor- at the end of the issue, would, uh, look forward to the next issue of this character in Mystic Comics, right, which, yeah, that, that's, that's kind of the crappy part, because, like, you know, some of these characters, like, I really enjoyed, like, Mastermind Excello. I thought this character was kind of cool, even though his powers were batshit insane. Because <laughs> it's like, he he's like a spy who's supposed to be really smart. And he can just, like, imagine plots against America, right? And it would be, it would, that would actually be something that was, that's currently going on. And he... He would have names and locations and go there and stop the pl- and stop the plots. And he's like super strong as well and has like a, a awesome gun, right? I really love his catchphrase, by the way. At the end, uh, when it, his catchphrase, by the way, is that, is I don't know if you can read, it, but America first, last, and always, Excelio. That's the thing. A lot of the stories. Is a mix of like superhero stories and then like a and like you know spy stories with you know characters trying to stop plots against America because this came out this, this book came out around like you know um, World War Two right and the Great Depression so like uh, uh, America was super patriotic at this time right and there was a lot of unrest going on in the world right. Like, communism and fascism. So, like, yeah. A lot, a lot of the enemies, they, like, they fight. Oh, one thing that's cool is that... Um, because they didn't want to offend people, they would change the names of countries. So, instead of fighting the Germans, they would be fighting the Teutonic, Teutonians, or the Swastikans. Instead of Russia, they'd be fighting uh, Krusha. Right, and there's also China, China as well. Right, uh, one problem with the book is that uh, one, like the stories are only like four pages each, and like each comic would come with uh, a written story, right? That was like that had like next to no art, right? Like short story, like two page short stories. Like there's one about this cowboy who who shows up late to like a gunfight there's one about two game hunters in Africa who find like a dinosaur there's one about this jewel thief and another one about like a guy who um, commits who murders his boss right so like some of the superheroes in this book is the blue bit blaze who is basically kind of like a ripoff of, you can see him on the cover, which they changed his costume, by the way. He's kind of like a ripoff of uh, the Phantom, where his origin story is fucking bad, is, is also crazy. Where he was this, um, in the 1800s, his dad, he was like a college student on his, on his way to a costume party. And his dad shows him his invention, right? Which was, which is this blue blaze he invented, which, uh, it, that emitted some kind of like energy onto him, 
which made him immortal, but he went to sleep for like 80 years, woke up, and now he's bulletproof. Bulletproof, right? And is super strong and uses his powers to fight crime, right? And then like other characters, is you have the Dynamic Man, which that's him in the cover, but he doesn't look nearly as cool, right? Who is like, uh, basically, he's uh, kind of like Adam Warlock, where he's a genetically engineered human, Right? Whose creator died uh, while, like, you know, starting him up. And he uses his po powers, which he can fly. And super, he's super strong and smart. And, like, uses powers to fight crime, working for the FBI. Uh, you have Hercules, who's only in the last uh, two issues. Who's, uh, who, his dad w was, like, um... Uh, a fitness guy or something, and, like, raises his son in Antarctica to be, like, peak, like, human, uh, uh, peak eugenics or whatever, right? And he's, like, a giant, which, uh, his dad dies and he's left alone in Antarctica, and people, uh, circus, uh, people show up because they hear about this, this giant guy, Kid, uh, convince him to go, uh, go back to America with him, to become, like, a circus, uh, like, strong man, and then, like, he meets this female journalist and decides to, uh, leave and, uh, fight crime, right? Other characters, superhero characters, um, is Flexo the Rubber Robot, right? And, uh, oh, there, there's this story about these three crime fighters called the Three X's. Which I really like this story, but like it was only in the fir uh, the first issue, right? You also have like this character named Zephyr Jones, which the th this this got canceled and became basically Space Rangers, which was p pretty much the same plot, right? Yeah, well, what was I trying to... That, there's Flexo, right? Flexo, who's this... Supposed to be this robot that's made out of rubber with inflatable uh, gla uh, gas. He's able to fly, but he's also super strong. And he, he kind of reminds me of, like, a robot Luffy from One Piece. And he's, he's invented by these two brothers who have this remote control... Which they rarely use. And they use this his, this robot to fight crime. One problem I have with this con with this uh, book. Is that e characters look different. Like per issue. Like like the arts. Like they would use like different artists and stuff. And they would change like the, char the characters looks. Right like at one point like the, the bro. One of the brothers has like uh, a, a thin mustache. Which a lot of the characters. And this book has thin mustaches. Oh, there's also this one superhero called Decor, the magician, who can pretty much, who pretty much can like you know do everything right. Who uh, also works for like you know uh, the United States. He goes on this mission to like you know retrieve like a jewel from this rich guy in like. Uh, Arabia or so, or something like that, which that was a cool. That, that's the thing. The the Dacor the Magician issues were pretty good, but like you know he got canceled, I guess, in issues like three. So they re they replaced him with this other guy who's not as cool. Uh, there he is, right? W which is Mursa. Who basically has the same powers, but except for, like, you know... Well, no, he just has telepathy. That's pretty much his only power, right? Because I guess they thought that the, uh... That the one guy... That, uh, Decor was too, like, you know, OP. Because he, he could basically do every, anything, right? There's also this other character called the Invisible Man. Known as Dr. Uh, Gade. Who invents this device... Using like radiation to turn turn himself invisible, and he fights crime. His origin story was good, but I, I hate his costume. Oh, that's one of like Decor's ma magics is that he can turn like 
he does this thing where he turns people's weapons against them, right? But that was a good issue, right? Oh, uh, there's the two space rangers. It was supposed to take place in the future. But there, there's like a point where literally they fight, a, they fight a dragon. It's like, what the hell? And the spaceship looks kind of lame. Also, um, there's some uh, non-PC language in this in this uh, book, right? And also the the, the the depiction of other ethnicities is not great, right? Oh, there's this story: Taxi Taylor and his Wonder Car. That was that was crappy. <laughs> Basically, a dude who fights crime with his like car that can like become a plane or submarine or it was, that was me here's blue blaze with two pistols <laughs> there's also this one character called zara the jungle girl right which i'm trying to find that the, which she was basically kind of like um trying to find Oh, th this was a cool issue. But, like, how they draw, like, uh, Africans in this book is not too great. There's Zara. So, like, th th the Zara books are basically about this girl whose dad, like, th uh, was sick of, like, modernity pretty much and decided to live in the African jungle because, you know, it's, you know, life is simpler i guess living in the jungle but like isn't it super dangerous whatever he has this daughter who he he trains to you know use spears and like uh use bow and arrows and like she protects the jungle and you have this guy who's like the commissioner who's supposed to like fight crime uh, it's his job to like you know fight crime in the jungle so i want the one of the issues he he fights uh arabs who are Capturing Africans to make them slaves, right? That was a good issue. Which that still go that still goes on, by the way. <laughs> In like countries like Libya. So I don't know. Oh, there's also this one dumb character called the Finn Man, whose basis power he, he can turn himself Finn, and how he was basically like a mountain climber. Who found this like secret society, who are technically advanced, and they they they're also good at genetically engineering. So they turn him Finn, and he uses their tech their technology, and this uh, chick who becomes a sidekick, who's from that secret uh, that uh, that utopia in the mountain, to go and like uh, fight crime. All right? I don't know. I thought that was dumb. Also, there's this one horror story about this chick called the Black Widow, who basically, the devil gaslights this psychic girl into murdering this family, right, who went there to see the, the girl for a seance, right, and, like, Satan makes her kill the, the family, and the, the guy survives, goes back, and kills her, Satan resurrects her as a superhero to, and she kills the the surviving member of the family that she she tried to wipe out, and like Satan's like, oh, you're going to go out and kill, like you know, bring me the souls of evil doers. So she's like this evil superhero. <laughs> it's like what the fuck? That was crazy. Yeah. So I don't know, man. Like it. it I thought, like, it's the thing, I bought this because, you know, I I bought this because, like, you know, I wanted to try out Golden Age comics because I, I started reading, like, like, 70s and Silver Age comics, really enjoyed that, so I thought maybe I would enjoy Golden Age comics as well. Uh, I probably, I, I, which I've had, I have read some Golden Age comics, by the way, like Batman, and, like, uh, I think some, uh, not Avengers, because I don't think they were around in the Golden Age. Whatever, I, 
I, I've read some Golden Age comics, so I thought I would give this a ch chance. My first clue that this probably wasn't that good was the fact that these are, like, characters who aren't even around anymore. Right? And, like, you, you never even heard of. So that should have been my first clue that, hey, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed this. And the, the, the plots are super simplistic. And there's a lot of cliches. Like, like you know, like, the um, characters... And, like, almost every story, there's, like, a character... The characters are, like, OP, but, like, you know... The, we have to show the villains getting the upper hand. So, like, there's a lot of, like, you know, uh, like, this is, like, in almost every, like, story where a character gets clubbed, the main character gets clubbed over the head, right, and gets knocked out and puts in a dangerous situation, including characters who have super strength who getting clubbed over the head probably wouldn't bother them too much, like Dynamic Man, right? Which, by the way, the covers... The covers make, you, there's no interior art that's as good as the covers in any of these issues, right? So that's what's, that's also like false advertising there. Except for this one. This one, like kind of, like there was, like the Blues Blaze, the Blue Blaze issue in that, uh, sorry, story in that comic pretty much looked like the cover, but the rest of them don't. Like the first story with Dynamic Man, he kind of looks wimpy, right, and super thin, right, so I don't know, I, I, it's hard for me to recommend this book, I think if you're, I mean, it was, since we do live, like, in these times where, like, comic books are super woke, and they're, like, they're super, like, anti, like, um, conservative and all that stuff, it was kind of cool to see, like, you know, patriotic characters, uh, in comics, but the, the, then the problem is that, oh, like, the stories are super simplistic, and, uh, they're not that great. Oh, I did think it was kind of funny, there's, like, a point where a character swears, and it's, it's just random type, uh, like, um, they use, like, w random, like, symbols to represent, like, a character, like, swearing. I thought that was, like, something that was, that's something that happened in comic comics in the last few decades i didn't know that was that was going on in the golden age comics where they would censor people swearing i thought they wouldn't even have that but they did so that I, that was that was interesting but overall yeah I, I don't really recommend it but like it was a decent read so i'm giving it like a five out of ten right oh and some of the people who worked on this is uh will har Jack Binder, Arnold Hicks, Alfred H. Newton, Robert O. Erisman, George Capitan, and Harry Sal. And some of the books, some of the stories are, like, apparently uncredited, or they were using, like, fake names, right? Yeah, so that's all I gotta say for this review. I don't know what I'm gonna review next, but, uh, yeah, we'll pick, we'll, we'll probably do... I'm kind of in the mood to read more Marvel, so I'm gonna re review that Dan Slott Avengers book I bought. Like, <laughs> I bought that I haven't gone around to reading. I kind of want to read more, uh, some Silver Age after this because I do enjoy Silver Age, but I don't think I. I pretty much. I think I've reviewed pretty much every Silver Age book I had. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So like yesterday, I did a video where I was. I, I reviewed, like, a Digimon movie, and I, and I opened up, like, you know, some packs. I didn't open up the second pack, because my dog uh, was barking, so I had to go see the dog. So I'm going to do that now. So we're going to do a pack on opening, Digimon pack opening. Well, there, there's some, I heard some good news for Digimon fans. Apparently, they're gonna, there's going to be a Digimon convention this year for international fans. Right? They, they put that in the title. Digimon, like, you know, uh, Con 2022, um, you know, for, like, you know, fans worldwide, Digimon fans worldwide. So, um, people are suspecting that there's going to be big uh, Digimon Survive news. So, I'm looking forward to that. So, like, yeah, we're going to do, we're just going to open this up. 
I have to use scissors because uh, it's hard to open up the packs. Man, right away I get I get a double, which is feels like there's two cards here. Troopmon, which is a champion data undead type. Yeah, we're starting to see doubles. Miramon, which is a champion data flame Digimon common. Oh, we got Weedmon, who was, this was like the villain in like the last episode of Digimon Ghost Game, but he went by a different name. So it's like an all green Vegemon. It's a champion virus vegetation common. I don't know, that's that's interesting. I w th there's this there's this really cool Digimon uh, fan game I want to play uh, that looks pretty cool. But the the guy who the guy who made it this is Commandramon, which is a rookie virus cyborg slash. D Brigade. He looks kind of like Agumon, but like in camo. I don't know, looks cool. Black. It's a black card. This is Gisumon, Champion Virus Mollusk Digimon. Here's a uh, Piximon, Ultimate Data Fairy type. This is an Ultimate. 8,000 DP, so it's pretty strong. This is an Option Card, Meteor, Meteor Shower. Which is uh, Pikmon and Starmon's, like, you know, attack. We got an uncommon card, Gabumon. Which I already had a Gabumon, but you know, it's a, it's different art, so not too bad. And different effect. So yeah. Yeah, I, I had a Gabumon from the other set. The. Yeah. The uh, pack, like, you know. Um, what's it called? BT BT zero six. You can't actually fly. We got Infernal Mon, uncommon ultimate, unknown identified. In the games, he was a virus type. So yeah, and look who we got, a, a tamer card that's rare. Arata Sonata, who was a character from Cyber Sleuth, uh, yeah, Cyber Sleuth, the Digimon game for the PS4. Cool character. He he had a uh, Karamon, right? Who was like the the rookie Digimon of Dioboromon from the movie, right? So yeah, we got that. And the last card we have, which is also rare, is. Balukumon, which is a rookie data mini dragon. Is this the rookie form of Pale Digimon? Because they look similar. Yeah, I've never heard of this Digimon, but you know it's a rare. He has three thousand DP, which is rookies tend to have two thousand, so he's strong for a rookie. Level is that level four? The play cost for okay. No, he's level three. Yeah. So yeah, decent card. Yeah, that's it for this review, guys. I'm gonna try to review more comics. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that's it for this 